So we're talking about Fresh and Fit, uh, also known as Amru and Walter Weeks. Let's get into it. On the itinerary, we're going to go through the following topics. And mind you, if there's something you want me to address, you're going to need to send that in by Cash App, PayPal, or Super Chat. Otherwise, I just think you're a broke hater and you ain't serious. You did. Number one, Fresh and Fit, who are they? You know, what do I know of them? Because you guys know them from the internet. I've been with them in person. What's my experience been? Number two, are they red pillars or are they innovators? Because me, we're no pill over on this side. You dig? Hashtag no pill. We follow the ism. Red pill's garbage. Check out my last video on why we had to crush red pill into red dust. Number three, let's go through the lessons on the beef, the business, and the friendship vis-a-vis -vis Fresh and Fit. What are their beefs about? You know, how are people using this to benefit their business? And we'll talk a little bit about my friendship with them. Number four, oh, it gets juicy like your girl Coochie on a Friday night when she come by. You dig? Racism. Don't say it ain't so. Not 2022. We're talking about hating on a black female, but tricking on a white female. Is it true? Is it true? We're going to go through. Numero cinco. Do people hate the truth? We're going to talk about that, meaning the truth of what they're saying. Is that what's getting people mad? Is it the truth of who they are? We're going to talk about it. Numero seis, fake it till you make it. You know, some would accuse them of doing it. But did your favorite YouTuber not fake it till they make it? Because if we go ahead and pull people's cards, I think I'm the only one that's holding all aces. Most of the people you follow weren't a damn thing before YouTube. Let's keep it funky. Carrying on. Numero siete. Why you're fresh and fit having so many issues? It seems like every week it's a new damn problem. Well, seems like right now they are the internet. We'll talk about it. Numero ocho. Ocho. Same way my girl shape. You dig? The fresh and fit. Oh, yeah. The one time fresh and fit pissed me the fuck off. We going to talk about it. Excuse the vulgarity. We have Number. to talk about internet nerds real quick. Oh, we got I some internet really, nerds. I don't normally do this. Okay. But so after you commented on the racism, yes. someone wrote, and is that a white woman talking in the background? Yo, fraudulent, pretending, and weak in person offline. Kate can't listen to this con artist. So because there's a white person... Because you there's a white person. Racism. Oh, that's strange. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say this is a poor person because they've not super chatted it. They don't have Correct. two pennies to rub together. And not only is there a white person in the background, there's also a white woman on my shirt as well. We <laughs> got identify, white. You identify We one. got snow bunnies everywhere out here. You did. Shout out to my sisters as well. I love them all. I like them tall. I like them small. I like them thick. I also like them thin. I'm in it to win. Carrying on. So... The first thing, I always like to go to the root of things. You know, how did I meet Fresh and Fit, so to speak? And similar to a lot of folks, I met Fresh and Fit via Fresh, which is to say a gentleman named Walter Weeks, which, by the way, side note, Walter Weeks is a very uh, Anglo-Saxon sounding name, right? I saw the name Walter Weeks. He seems like an old white gentleman, right? Anyways. So I got a DM from Walter. And as you guys know, I'm not big into social media or internet stuff. So he had messaged me in September of 2020. And just for the record, I didn't even tell him that I was sharing this personal private conversation. And just to let you guys know, in terms of decorum, it's not proper to share private conversations, but I'm going to do this anyways, just for you guys, because I want you to understand the root of you know, how we came to know one another. So he sent a simple message, which very much so sounds like him. Yo, bro, uh, just tune into your channel. Got to say real, recognize real. Would love to have you on the podcast in Miami. Now he sent that in September. I didn't reply till December, probably because I was looking for some message from some little bitch. You know, I'm scrolling through my message request, looking for a message for a little bitch. And then I saw that. Um, so then I responded a couple months later. And first I checked out to see who he is. I saw their podcast at the time, maybe had 10 to 17,000 subscribers. I can't remember. Maybe at the time I had like 50,000, very strong following. Uh, but what I liked about these guys is that one, they were hustling hard. They were on the come up. They're very professional about their work. And me, I've always been one to respect hustle because I am a hustler. You did. So I really like that to see some young brothers trying to make it. And if I can help someone, I'm always willing to do that. Um, so basically I said, yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to come out. And he did the proper thing, which is to say, hey, you know, we'll fly you out to Miami and we'll get everything set up. Now, mind you, 
when you're talking to a wealthy person and you fly them out and do all that stuff, it's just a gesture because obviously I could fly myself out, no problem. And to that point, to show you how solid I am, because I'm going to speak on it, I brought my assistant with me, you heard me? So I show up, you heard me with a model. She actually, if you saw that Tyler Creator, uh, Tyler the Creator video, uh, she's the model in there, you heard me? So I pull up with this tall, skinny, little half white, half Asian thing, you heard me? Um, but the thing is, so they paid for my accommodations and my flight. And then I had to pay for my assistance accommodations and flight, which means that I lost money being out there. And of course, my time is highly valuable. But as I said, I always have respected people who hustle. And when you're a mature man in a strong position, it's always good to reach out and help other people. And so I was very much so interested to do that. So I said, yeah, for sure. I show up, paid her way. I could have said, hey, you know, cover my assistant too, which is a standard thing in the entertainment industry and other industries, you know. So I just showed up, me and my assistant, we pull up, we do the show. They're very professional. And just to give you some context on how things have grown really rapidly for these guys, um, when I went on their show, they got the highest number of live viewers ever, which was basically my following. So that was the start of my relationship with Fresh and Fit. And obviously it started with my interaction with, with Walter. I met um, Fit, um, also known as Amru. I think that's his government name. I just want to make sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sensitive about pronouncing names correctly. Um, so I met him at the studio. What you should understand about these two is that, you know, Walter is very personable, very friendly guy. He does the networking and he's a consummate master networker. In fact, he's maybe one of the top three networkers I've ever met. And I know people around the world who operate at a high level. Then I met um, Fit, who's not as personable, but he's a very straightforward man. You know, he's very clear cut, straightforward, and I can respect that. Uh, so we did the show. It was a good time. And I can tell you that they made every effort to show me love. Pick me up from the airport in a nice little BMW truck. Your boy was wearing an Islamic uh, thobe, if you know what that is. So me and my assistant hop in the car. They took us to the hotel. We checked in. Then we had to drop my assistant off at her hotel. You know, I don't mix business and pleasure. You did keep it separate. And then uh, we went to the studio, did our recordings. And this is before they discovered their magic formula. And I'm a business guy. I'm an international businessman, you dig? And what I always teach you guys in business is that you got to try new things to be successful. So this is before they discovered the magic of bringing all them hoes through, you hear me? They figured out if you could get the whole train going through, choo-choo, uh, guys are going to show up because most males are based and they're driven by their lower head, you dig? So this is before they figured that out. So let's talk a little bit about the two personalities. Real quick, we have M. Chavez at Peace of the Saints. You just finished your book. Thank you for willing, mm -hmm. if you're willing to put out your past in writing. Salute. Thank you, Saint. And then we have Williams at Peace of the Saints. Appreciate the PowerPoint. Oh, indeed, man. I try to keep it thorough, keep it honest and fair. And that's what people respect me for is that, you know, I'm going to just say what it is. Um, and, and so, go ahead. We now have a baller alert. Baller alert. We have... Let's go. We have Matthew. He sent $50. He said, peace to the saints. Mm. Your content has inspired me to stop caring about the opinions of mm. others and to focus on my own progress, which has more than paid off. Church. I recently achieved an important certification and I'm starting at my new job on the 17th. Thank you. That's good news. May the saints all commend him on that progress because that's what we're about here. We have a real community and we really show love and we want to see prosperity. You dig? That's why I love to see them baller alerts because when you got enough to give, it says a lot about you not only your heart but also your finances so i love to see that um what you'll see here is a, a two photos i'm gonna go through uh, walter and then we're gonna go through um uh, amru or fit uh, also known as myron Gaines. and um number one thing i like about this is i got to see the growth of the gentleman we all have things we want to be and things we want to achieve and one thing i could say that's consistent about walter weeks is this guy is humble this is a word I've been described as never by the internet, but by people who meet me in person. Oh, you're a very humble guy. No one on the internet would ever describe me as humble because when I'm here, I do it like I'm doing it for TV. It has to be bombastic. It has to be exciting. But one thing about Walter is he's humble. And that is an undeniable thing. That's something that you instantly feel when you deal with him. He's not putting on airs. He's not acting like he's better than anybody. And I always really admired that. Number two, he's friendly. And I mean it in the true sense of the word friend and that he treats you like a friend. He's friendly, not nice, not kind, but friendly. And then number three, this boy know how to network. And I think those two first things being humble and friendly help him be an effective networker. You know, people tend to trust him and want to mess with him 
because he seems like a straightforward, calm, good guy. Um, that's my experience of him. You dig? Now, I'm sure uh, people can speak to their experience. And if you have an experience that I don't know about, send it through uh, Super Chat, PayPal, or Cash App. Um, if you don't do that, don't babble in the comments because we just we can't trust what you're saying to be a fee issue because I don't trust poor people or ugly people carrying on. So that's Walter. One thing you can observe in this uh, photo that I noticed changed about Walter, or shall I say upgrading, this happens. You heard me? Your money game change. Things going to be a little different. You see he got the ice on, and I like to see it. And I saw him in his element. You know, I was there for the 500K uh, subscriber party. We went out to the club in Miami. The boy threw the ice on. He threw the, the Louis jacket on. Now, me, I'm not big into wearing other people's brands. That's not my thing. Um, but I like to see the ice. I like to see him in his element. He is having a good time. Now, remember that because there's a fascinating pairing between Amru and Walter or fresh and fit because they actually are radically different individuals at their core. I have a little bit of both of them within me, and I think that's why I kind of get along with them at some level. Now, carrying on to the side of uh, fit, um, my understanding is his proper name is pronounced Amru. He goes by Myron Gang. You might say, well, that's phony. Why is he going by a fake name? I totally understand. That's a good question. Uh, by the way, most of your favorite internet guys do that. The reason my guess is because a name like Amru is not very marketable. Same reason Jamie Foxx has a stage name. Jamie Foxx, it's short, it's clear, you can spell it, it sounds good. So Myron Gaines makes sense for his fitness thing. So that's that's cool. Um, so when I say who is, these are the things that I, I've come to know and understand about him that I think are interesting. Number two, um, has an Islamic background. My understanding is that he's Sudanese by ethnicity. He's uh, had a background in law enforcement. And truth be told, who would have thought I'd ever be fucking with the police? You hear me? Not how I was brought up. Um, number four, this I feel like is a quintessentially Myron Gaines, aka fit. He wore a branded fresh and fit t shirt to the club. We in Miami with all the hoes, everybody dressed up, uh, fresh wearing the jewels. I got a little something on too. I'm wearing bright, crazy colors, everybody lit. This man then showed up in a fresh and fit t shirt. Now, what that tells you is. He don't give a goddamn what anybody thinks because I can only imagine he knows that that's not necessarily club attire. He comes in, he's promoting the brand. He's there on business. He's working. He's working. And I can respect that ethic because I had that same ethic for many years, which is to say I go in, I'm hustling. I'm trying to get things done. You dig? I'm not there to play. And one thing that I'm pretty confident is true of both of them. Correct me if I'm wrong. See, I don't drink alcohol, never drank a drop of alcohol, and I don't intend to. I don't think either of them drink. There are bottles at the table that were ordered, but I don't think either of them drank any. So you got to see the higher level of business operation that I respect. Number five, this man didn't come in. He had no jewels. He had no bling, bling. This motherfucker had an Apple iWatch on, which I was like, God damn, this nigga don't care about nothing and nobody. The nigga got the nerd watch. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to use the N word. The gentleman has the, the Apple nerd watch on. I was like, this man is being himself. Within the saint in the center nation, we have a three-sentence Bible, a three-sentence Quran, a three-sentence Torah. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. So I had to respect, like, homie ain't trying to be nobody. He ain't trying to look like a rapper. He's just being himself. And number six, he's straightforward, which I think people understand about him. And that's a part of what got these boys in some hot water. But you got to wonder, like, why are these boys under attack, man? Like, what have they done that's so bad? Well, turns out success brings haters. Like, you might even look at my comments, see some haters there. Well, that's a part of the game. It brings more love and it brings more hate. As a man, a wise man, your question is, which side of that equation am I going to focus on? But let me describe what's going to happen when you become successful. And I know there's a great many people in the comments who don't necessarily know how life changes when you get fame, clout, or money. Number one, hashtag me too, which means chicks are trying to mess with you just to set you up. Either get some clout or get a payday. Catch you slipping on the child support or hit you with a case. Claim your Harvey Weinstein, even if you ain't. Number two, you're going to receive hate. The hate will come from people with the same skin as you, People from the same neighborhood, people from your family, 
also will come from strangers. It will come from anybody who looks at you, sees you get out of that $300,000 car, and they don't like that. They start looking at their car and comparing, which is something that always leads to problems in your mind. Don't compare yourself to anybody. So the hate is going to come. It's called jealousy. Number three, when you're successful, people are going to imitate you, right? Of course. And guess what? Those are the wise business people who imitate you. They're like, yo, he got a model that's working. Let me try that on for size. He's making a buck out of it. Let me see if I can make a buck out of it. Shout out to Jared. He copped the hat. You dig? Hey, we also have Jorge. He said, peace of the saints. It was great meeting you and briefly interacting with you at the 500K party for mm -hmm. FNF at their studio. You're super humble in person for sure. And also super well-mannered and educated. It is an honor. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that compliment. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, when you're doing things on television or entertainment, you have to do it in a certain way so that it's engaging. If you were to meet me in person, I don't curse and I don't like to hear cursing. But on this platform, you know, it's bombastic language. It keeps you engaged. And for the real ones, if you want to know, is Marquette what he really says? I wrote a book, My Life, age zero to 25. It's entitled The Black Box. About 300 reviews, all five stars, real reviews from real people. And I use legal names in the book and I tell you who I really am. You dig? So if you want to know if I'm fee -ish, a fee ish to the gristle, yeah, that's the document. Shout out to Richard who also copped the hat. You dig? Y'all trying to get fresh out here. Well, you know what? I'm getting even more consistent right now because I was inspired by Fresh and Fit because one thing I want to point out about them, you see, I came into the YouTube game on accident. And a lot of people say, greatest dream to be an internet influencer. I already had serious amount of money. I came into this game on accident. People asked me to make videos. I didn't come on here trying to figure it out. But one thing I really like about what they did, how they moved, you see, I got my 50,000 subs just like off of spiritual stuff. You heard me? <clears throat> but when I pulled up to their studio and they had like say 10,000, 17,000 subs, and then I pulled up again recently in December and they had like 500,000, that level of growth only comes from hard work and dedication. There's no luck in that. That comes from hustling and hustling and hustling and trying new things. And that's the lesson you guys need to get from them. And let me teach you all something. If you ever hate a man that you never met, you hate a man, you never shook his hand. You're a hoe. You're a straight hoe because you can't hate someone without knowing them. That's your own mental illness. Just being real out here. I hear people say they hate Donald Trump. I'm like, damn, like, did he run over your dog in his car? Did he fuck your bitch? Like, how do you hate somebody you never met? That's really ill. That's mentally ill. Shout out to Mark. He copped the hat. You dig? We about to have the world a little bit fresher. You dig? The world about to be a little bit fresher now. It's a beautiful thing. So imitation is something that occurs when you have success. And here's the fourth thing. And here's a couple nerds you guys have seen on the come up. Literally, there's a whole industry that has come out of making videos about fresh and fit. Because I don't put ads on my channel. Because those ads are run by the Google Corporation and they're making the bulk of the money any goddamn ways. And I don't like them because they censor the truth. I don't run ads. But every other YouTuber does run ads. So what happens is when you got a certain YouTuber who makes a video about Fresh and Fit and that's they notice like, whoa, every time I talk about something else, I don't get any views. But if I mention Fresh and Fit, try to drag them through the dirt, now I'm getting 100,000 views. And 100,000 views, now they made like $8,000 on ad rev. That's why they're doing it. It's profitable. Huh? Talk to me. We have Muzzy that just sent the last super chat also cop the hats. We have a lot of people. Yeah, they know what to do. Yeah. Shout out to Kevin White, formerly known as Swiffer Wedget. I had the pleasure of meeting the saint at our conference. He writes, peace to the saints tuition. And by the way, we got about what 1,600 folks online. Go ahead and hit that like button for the big homie. Who you know made a PowerPoint presentation to respect and honor your time. Huh? These boys be on here babbling. Uh, now let's start off with the first thing. And this kills me. And you know the reason I speak on this is because this can happen to any of us. You get a little bit of bread together, all of a sudden these hoes want to hashtag me too. Huh? Now consider this. This chick I find to be disgusting because number one, she lied and tried to portray Myron in a certain light without sharing all the text messages. She shares some of them. 
The reason I got to speak up on it is because she even got so ridiculous that she was like, I'm pregnant and I, I'm losing my baby. Like my baby might not survive. And I know it's because of the stress and I'm stressed because Myron and all of his followers keep bothering me. Well, first off, ho, where's your baby daddy at? Like, I'm looking at your IG and I see you showing all these pics of you being pregnant. But where's the father of your child at? Like, are you married? Like, where's the father of your child? Further, if Myron asked you if you were single and you said you were single, how is it you're single but you popping up pregnant? Use a brain dead little nut. I hope nobody is following this harlot. Further, why are you going to try to Harvey Weinstein the young man? He told you what it was off the rip, which gives you the opportunity as a female, as an adult woman, to say, I'm in or I'm out. But what you tried to do was get a little bit of fame and build a name off of what you could claim, huh? Which is why you made up trumped up stories trying to get famous. This happens all the time. I find it to be disgusting. And let me let you guys know how you know you're talking with a real one. Consider this. The big homie go way back. Check all the moves I make. Super thoughtful. Number one. I was messing with Fresh and Fit when they had like 10,000 to 17,000 subs. They were way smaller than me. People even look at my roast of uh, KS when I said, this guy's a fraud because he's putting out fraudulent information. And the reason I did it is because I got the same, the center nation. If you are part of this thing of ours, if you a member within this, patreon.com slash the saint in the center, we got community. You heard me? I meet my people in person. You heard me? I show them love. When they come into my city, I'm taking people out, catching checks, all kind of stuff. And further, if you know anything about me, I've given out, we're at like $48,000 sent out to people who make products with us. Huh? Yeah, I show love. That being said, you got people like this uh, or people who are watching who don't realize when I made my video about KS, I did that before he blew up. I called the fraud early. And the same thing, everything I'm doing is early. So it's not like I'm trying to chase clout. People will go on that video now and they'll say, you're trying to chase cloud off of Kevin Samuels. I'm like, how? I had more patrons than him when I made the video. He wasn't famous when I made the video. Use your brain. You guys got to say like, dang, this brother got some foresight. Okay, we have Keon Taylor who said, what up, bro? Love and respect what you do. We'll be at the next conference. Let's connect soon. Absolutely. We Peace of the Saints. We have Devin Brown who said, haven't watched Front and Fits yet beside a few clips, but I don't understand how grown men hate on other grown men they never meet in person. It's weird. Now, I can understand if there's an ideological issue and we're about to get into ideology. You did? Because within Assassin, we follow this ism. And this ism is the truest game that will lead you to prosperity and morality. You see, and what's greater than the fact that we have the ism, it's an integrated ideology, way of identifying, way of behave, behaving. And there's also a community and a headquarters. Red pill is just a bunch of garbage. So a lot of people are like, hey, Marquette, I know you don't like the red pill. So you you made a video against red pill and it hurt my feelings. And I know that you're friends with Fresh and Fit. You went on their show and you didn't say anything about red pill. Do your research, little buddy. If you go all the way back to the first time I was on their show, they said, well, what do you think about RP? I'm so like out in the world with it. I said, what's RP? I didn't even know what it meant. And then they're like, red pill. I was like, oh, okay. And here's the thing. We're no pill. I never mess with it. I've been consistent from the beginning all the way to the ending. That being said, we're no pill because A, we don't engage in intoxicants. We don't promote intoxicants. Further, red pill is garbage. Look at my latest video that explains why red pill is complete rubbish. Okay, we have Black Heights advancing your career sent a $100 super chat. Baller alert. I want to see somebody break that record. You know they went in with 300 yesterday. Yeah, they was said, going in. Would love to host you on my channel to talk about your education and accomplishment. Very impressive. Mm. Be easy, Saints. People have said to me, Marquette, I saw you did a podcast. It looks just like Fresh and Fit's podcast. How could you do that? You're copying them. You're a copycat. You're a copycat. Now, let me teach you something. Number one, I'm a businessman. If you had to describe me, if I drop dead and in the news, they had to mention that, they wouldn't say, uh, YouTuber Marquette Devon Burton, known as the Saint in the Center. No. They would say international businessman graduate of top 20 universities, distinguished alumnus of the Johns Hopkins University, international businessman with offices in South Korea, Puerto Rico, well-traveled. They mentioned real things. You did. 
I say that to say this as a businessman, when you're in a market, you look at the leaders in the market, meaning who is thriving. When you identify who is thriving, you identify what's called their unique value add or their unique prop, their unique value proposition. Meaning what are they doing differently that's making them successful above and beyond everyone else? In their case, it's twofold. Number one is they're putting out tremendous amount of content. They're prolific. Honestly, I couldn't put out as much content as they do because your boy got to go to fly to Mexico to have a mariachi suit custom made. Then I got to fly to Dubai to have a, a suit custom made. You hear me? Then I got to fly to Albania to see what the Albanian hoes is talking about. Then I got to fly to Africa to touch down in the homeland because y'all said I don't like black women. So I got to go get them from the source. You dig? Then I got to fly to this private island. Don't nobody know about on a private plane. I ain't got time like that. So number one, they're way more prolific. It's a beautiful thing. You have to admire work ethic. Number two, they had a model that was not unique, but it was unique on YouTube. huh? And they executed with excellence. That is to bring on a whole bunch of hoes, a whole bunch of harlots and dog these hoes out and create some interesting moments and some great conversations that expose female nature, but also get gets a chance for the red pill ragers to get their rocks off, to see good looking women disrespected. And it's very entertaining. Hell, I watch it. I damn sure watch the clips when they're kicking holes out. I like to see it. But let me help you dummies out. huh? Now, this is the wisdom of a man who's had experience and had the chance to see the earth spin around a couple times. Let me tell you, young boy, something. What is fresh and fit, really? Someone's like, Marquette, you disrespected red pill. How could you do that? Fresh and fit or red pill? Well, number one, nah. If you really want to understand fresh and fit, you need to understand them as innovators in YouTube. They're not red pill. They said re they say red pill things, but they're not famous because of the red pill. They're famous because of the following combination. Now, one, did they create things that have never been created? Hell nah. But they bought to they brought together some meaningful pieces of the puzzle. It's called innovation. I'm going to describe it for the people who are brain dead. Number one, look in that bottom corner. It says controversy slash conflict, Jerry Springer. You see some hoes fighting right there. You see them 304s arguing and fighting. Jerry Springer just hanging back, holding the mic like, carry on, carry on. Make me famous. Get them ratings up, baby. So number one, when you have controversy and conflict, this appeals to the average mind because the average mind is brain dead. They just want to be entertained. They want to laugh and they want to look down at people I'm like, oh, those people are crazy. Those people are ridiculous. So they brought in the Jerry Springer aspect. That was clever. But then they did a little bit better. They, they became Howard Stern. Most of you youngins don't know about Howard Stern because he come from an old era. He was the first guy that did podcasts before podcasts. It was called radio, you dumb bastard. It's called radio. It's broadcasted over frequency, you dumb bastard. Now, radio is where you actually talk into a microphone, kind of like a podcast, right? And then he used to have females there. He'd ask them questions about sex. He used to have porn stars. He'd have multiple women. He'd say foul stuff to them. He'd ask them what kind of size men they like. How, how, how tall does the guy have to be? Who do they date? The exact same thing. Howard Stern originated that concept. And guess what? That's what made him famous. Then they brought in another necessary piece, which everyone does, but they were able to stack it on top of those other pieces. Those first two pieces get the views. It brings in audience. This last piece brings in the money. Huh? Well, of course they get the money from the views because they run ads on the channel, which is smart business, but then they can sell you educational products. They went into the how-to self-help, self-improvement education space like a life coach or a dating coach, like Tony Robbins. So they brought in the education. Hey, if you want to learn how to do fill in the blank, real estate, NFTs, Instagram, whatever the case is, we sell it. You can buy it here. That was smart. And then the red pill, that's just a small part of what they do. It's language because certain terms get you to come in because you're familiar. Saint, you Peace gotta work Saints. for Black Heights. That's the one that's in a hundred dollars. He mm -hmm. said those are the type of collabs we need to see. Oh, it may be possible. It may be possible. Now, do you guys understand what I just broke down? Because you will rarely get anything this insightful on the internet. Because people with this level of IQ don't need the internet because they already got money without the internet. Eh? Carrying on. Shout out to the three people who just bought the black box. I just can see their emails right now. But Shout out yeah. to the people copping the black box. You want to know how a real one came up? And by the way, I came out the mud. Huh? I came from the bottom.
huh? And got got the bag popping in my early 20s. Now, as I said, success leads to imitation. Here's a look at me imitating, saying, how can I use this model? This model's genius. Bring some hoes through. Let's get this going. Me and my partner, Jabrizi, we on here. We got some hoes through, and we going to tweak the model. We going to improve it, because just like Drake said, it's not about who did it first. It's about who did it best. You did. So, yeah, we going we gonna to do it. I heard a nerd in the comments. Not I heard, but I read a nerd in the comments. Who wrote, I hope you called fresh and fit before you did this. No, absolutely not, because it's business. You see, I'm not going to call them and tell them what my business move is. not necessary, because whether they say yes or no, I'm doing it anyways, because I'm the big homie. You did. Let that never get confused. Further, if they copy something that I did, which I'm sure they may have learned something from me. I've learned something from them, that's for sure. I surmise they have learned something from me because my Patreon and ran way up. And that's something I was discussing with them when I was there the first time I was there, sharing the game that I had on Patreon, on Super Chats and things like that and show them how I move, right? So if you have friends, birds of a feather flock together, if you're not learning things from your successful friends, you're an imbecile. You really are. And you don't understand business. So this is me leveraging their model and seeing how I could tweak it and make it my own. Because understand this, no one can do what Fresh and Fit does because they're not fresh and fit, which is to say, you're not going to see me kicking females out because that's not my nature. I'm not going to kick the broad out. That's not how I get out. That's not me. So if you want to see that, you got to go to Fresh and Fit. That's a unique value add that they offer. But in terms of kicking game and spitting game and enchanting a woman, you heard me? And wrapping those words around her. Yeah. Ain't nobody can do that like I do that. Nobody. Uh, Because they don't have the experience. I really live this. And in terms of actually having bad females on a consistent basis and you slaying them left and right, Jabrizi really lived like that. You heard me? So... We're doing something and they're doing something, but we imitated the model because it's a great model. But they didn't innovate. They didn't create the model. They brought a model that already previously existed and we're learning from them. And you should probably try to do the same. But here's the thing. A good man, you might imitate it and you show love and respect. But most people couldn't imitate it. They started to hate it. They saw these dudes winning. They decided rather than imitating, they started hating. And that's evil. The hatred unmotivated is evil, especially if it doesn't have an ideological basis or any real reason for it. Now we got to talk about it. We talking about these black women. Well, really, we talking about what uh, Fresh and Fit said about the black women. Now, uh, number one, um, my boy was in there like, uh, uh, Lakeisha? What did he say? Laquita? Did you hear it? It was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, Now, number one, I must say there's a couple of things to consider. Firstly, as friends, if I was talking to the gentleman, would I advise them to be more strategic in how you talk about entire demographics of human beings? For sure. Absolutely. Um, Do I understand how they may have made that error? error? Yeah. Are we in the entertainment business? Was that entertaining? Absolutely. Were they being honest about how they feel and what their preference is? For sure. Which makes me ask, well, do people hate the truth? For sure, people hate the truth. You see, the truth in our society is undervalued. If they actually don't like black women, and I'm not saying that's the case, but let's say they don't, and then they express that out of their mouth, that's their truth. Why can't we say, hey, brother, live your truth? Instead, we have to punish them for being honest. We live in a strange society where you get mad at people for saying how they feel. Then you turn around and wonder, why do the politicians always lie to us? Because you can't handle the truth. Huh? Now, you might ask more quick, why do you have an image on your screen that says, Sharkeisha, no, Sharkeisha, no, Sharkeisha, quit hitting her. Well, there's a reason. I think people are so focused on listening and watching your PowerPoint that they're forgetting to hit the like button. Oh, they ain't hit the like button? No. Oh, man. We'll give them a little bit of time. Well, we'll go ahead. time we yeah. have John Steven, he sent tuition. Yeah, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me give him a little bit of time. Because we we really talking that talk today, you heard me? We going in. And you, you gave him a presentation. Yeah, right? It's, it's funny, too, how we're in an era where men don't behave as men. It's like they want a free ride in a fancy car. And they want to complain when they don't get a free ride in a fancy car. It's unreal. Like they can sit here and talk in the chat about irrelevant things so they can't have a like button. Yeah. It's like, I'm not saying, hey, go ahead and donate some tuition, which would be respectful, right? Yeah. Because my time's valuable, right? Yeah. Okay. 
how often do they get to talk to a CEO who's run multiple companies through various industries? Probably like one on one. Right. Because yeah. in real life, I wouldn't talk to them. Right? right. Some of these guys I, I wouldn't talk to because we're not in the same places. Right. Right. Yeah. OK. But they show no respect. It's crazy. It's crazy out here. I'm almost wondering if I should just end this damn thing. I have no reason to be here, huh? Okay, man, right? This guy's hilarious. I know. <laughs> You're not lying. I, I fucking crack myself up. I'm not going to lie to you. Ah, now, so you might be wondering, Mark, why does it say Sharkisha? No. <laughs> Number one, this is one of the funniest goddamn videos I've ever seen. It's funny because her name is Sharkisha. I ain't going to lie to you. That's just funny to me. It's also funny because the, the woman was so frank that Shorty was like, Sharkisha, no. We have Tyree. Yes, if there's a Patreon, Tyree, I will put that in the chat for you. Not only is there a Patreon, it's the greatest Patreon that you've ever seen in life, my boy. I say that humbly somehow. It is the greatest Patreon you've seen in life. Hey, Saint, um, if you want this shirt, it says uh, too sexy for my shirt. Uh, just shoot us a message and we'll, we'll go ahead and post that link up for you guys. No problemo. Oh, we only got 1,300 likes and 1,800 viewers. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. That's why I called it out. Uh, uh, uh. It's like they don't want the game. They need the game, but it's like they don't want it. That's why I always say there's a hierarchy to things. You feel me? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the reason we have these two females is because one of them is Sharkeisha, and Sharkeisha lit. You might even say that Sharkeisha is behaving aggressively like a shark. I'm just saying. So Sharkeisha is about to, you know, she didn't she pull it up and she's trying to sucker punch Shorty. These are two different types of black females. One of them is clearly super hood, not the kind of chick I would date. She the kind of chick who's gonna end up on welfare. Uh, she gonna be at food for less, selling her food stamps. You hear me? Uh, slanging EBT cards, trying to give you the the two for one deals out there. What I'm saying is, she's a lower class ghetto black female. This other African American young lady, she seemed like a perfectly good, sweet kid. Here she is holding her iPod. Uh, she probably ain't got her bread game right because I see she got the cord earphones. You hear me? She ain't got her money to get them AirPods. It's all good though. Uh, she got a backpack on, which indicates that she went to school that day. Sharkeisha ain't got her backpack on, and Sharkeisha lit because she got a beanie on and shorts. Who wears a beanie and shorts? A beanie indicates it's it's cold outside. It's winter. A short indicates it's hot outside. It's summer. This broad is a nut. She probably is a hair hatted hooligan and ain't got her wig on. That's why she got the beanie on. I say that to say. There are different kinds of black women in this world. There's the lower class black woman who is completely unruly because she's not had any guidance from a good father, which would have been a black man. So anytime you see a black female in disrepair, let you not deny the reality that that is because the black male is in disrepair. When you see women of every race in this modern era running around lawless, running around brain dead and clueless, exercising no morality, going for the gold in the whole Olympics, living by a whole philosophy, using whole logic. That is because males have failed and males have failed to step up as men. That's number one. Okay, we have the diet vendor who said the backpack briefcase is even more impressive when it's in your hands, guys. Mm. Grab that while it's there. True indeed. And they're, they're going and indeed. it's a one, one run. One run. Now, this other African-American young lady, she got on some glasses, so she's trying to see stuff. She's sitting in class trying to actually see what's written on the board. She got a backpack. She didn't went to school that day, and she's a little bit naive because she's looking at the camera, not realizing the person holding the camera is about to yell out, world star, and your lights are about to get knocked out in front of the whole planet Earth. But have no fear. We call this evidence and dry snitching. So Sharkeisha dumbass is about to go to jail. Now, you might ask yourself, Marquette, why did you go off on a rant on Sharkeisha? Why'd you do that, buddy? Well, the reason that I did that is because these two females represent different archetypes in the black female's existence. One is a piece of trash, ghetto, unruly, violent, disrespect 
hateful, downtrodden, little dirty rat. The other one has a lot of potential to grow up and be a, a good mother, a good wife and contribute to society. I say that to say when these guys are using the terminology of like Sharkeisha and Laquisha and all this stuff, what they're essentially trying to allude to is the idea of A, the lower class black female, uh, B, the ghetto black female, things like that. Now, one thing I will point out from a cultural standpoint is that those are ethnic names. Those are names that are quintessentially African-American. I happen to know my name is Marquette, which is an African-American name which is to say there's nothing wrong with having culturally unique names. I mean, we should be proud for every other name or culture has their own names, right? You don't meet an, a guy from India named Bobby or John. So I get that we should have our own names. And I also get the perspective of Fresh and Fit, which is they're essentially saying, we don't like ghetto black chicks and we think most of them are. So that's the controversial part. Is that true? Ain't no comment, no comment. If you have friends, you won't agree with everything that your friends do or say. Now, me, I can only live based on my culture. And in my culture, you don't snitch on your friends. You don't rat on your friends. You don't um, fail to come to your friend's aid if that's how they keep it with you. You see, within the three cents Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. You got to verify that someone's a good person. Now, if you have someone that you deal with and they've always been good to you, can you discount them based on what they did to someone else when you can't verify that story? And you just don't know. So now I'm not going to disrespect them because they always show me love when I pull up. You dig? So let me give you like another like just small nugget of advice because you're going to have situations with your friends. Consider this. Say one of your friends or your allies comes into an issue. They have an issue with somebody. You could stand back and say, oh, I'm going to be neutral. People who see you not coming to the aid of your friends, you saying you're going to be neutral and stay out of it. They know that you're not a real one. They know that if they ever become friends with you, you're not going to support them because you don't have loyalty, right? So they're never going to consider you to be someone they want to link up with because you don't ride for your homies. Now, if you ride for your people, whether they lose, win, or draw, even the person you rode against will have to respect you because they'll say, hey, that's his man. He rode with his man. And in my book, The Black Box, I talk about real life situations like this so you can understand that this stuff has meaning. It is. And me, like I come from a different breed because, as I said, I got off the porch early. So my OGs put me on game at a young age. So even when I was in high school, you can read in my book, there was a situation in which I was in class and a kid yelled out a slur at the teacher. And the teacher turned around and he thought it was me. And it wasn't me. But I didn't snitch on the dude who said it, even though he wasn't even a friend of mine. But I knew in my head, what does it look like that the hustler is going to snitch on this little nerd civilian who said this comment and it did cost me. I wasn't able to go on field trips because this, this teacher wouldn't sign the permission slip for me to go on field trips and things like that. So yeah, I suffered, but it, it's about who you are as a man. You got to be a stand up man. You don't rat and snitch on your people. You don't rat and snitch in general. You keep it solid and you be loyal. Now, if your people betray you, that's a different thing. Or if your people are indiscriminate murderers, meaning they just kill people indiscriminately, or if they commit sex crimes, that's a different thing. But all beyond that, if they're good to you, show them love. Okay, I'm going to stop you. That deserves it. So Castro, he sent $349.99 New Zealand dollars. I tried to do conversion, yeah. and that's over 200 USD. Bowler alert, stream high. And he's a piece of the saint. Shout out to the big homie, Mark Webb. And Shout out to Castro. Absolutely. I've had a consultation with him. We talked about business, and the gentleman is a hustler. He's obviously prospering. That's a beautiful thing. And then we do have a couple people's intuition, so we're going to thank you. We need to carry on. But someone did ask if you have a personal chef, so you, you do have your diet on Patreon. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, because I am in A1 physical condition, just side note, not to brag, but just to let you guys know, a lot of people say that they're in shape, but they're really not. Uh, if you can't hit 30 pull-ups and then box 12 rounds and then run 13 miles and then jump rope for 15 minutes, back to back to back to back, I don't consider you in shape. You dig? So um, I could do all that on an empty stomach, by the way. But if you want to learn about how to eat well for true physical fitness, endurance, and muscular strength, um, definitely get that membership on Patreon. I have my exercise regimen on there. And most importantly, I have my diet with the actual recipes, and it's a Google Doc, so it's updated regularly. Okay, we have Brandon Banks. He sent $100. Uh, 
Hey, I appreciate that. And he's a real one because he's willing to have his thinking challenge. Most people just want to make up their mind and stick with what they already you think. Already, you already read what it was. Indeed, <laughs> I did. Um, I do want to talk about the one time that Fresh and Fit pissed me off. Pissed me the fuck off. I'll never forget it. Um, so last time I went in there for the 500K subscriber party, I think they knew I was pissed too. And I'm going to tell you the story. Um, number one, and, and let's let's talk some playerism, you dig? The first time I pulled up with Fresh and Fit, I pulled up with a model. That's cool. Second time I pulled up, I pulled up in their city. We ain't in my city. We in their city. Pretty little thing. Come meet me at the airport. Then uh, Fresh comes and picks us up. You know, he got his little female. I got a little son with me. You dig? Playerism. Um, so then we go to the studio. We go straight from the airport. Now, mind you, I flew in from Vegas. So I came in on like a five hour flight. And because of the, the pandemic, uh, they weren't serving food because <laughs> apparently if you serve food, everyone's going to get sick. I thought people start to become unhealthy when they don't eat. Anyways, so they didn't serve any food during this five hour flight. We go straight to the studio and we do the initial interview one on one. I've been eating a damn thing. We do a three hour one on one, however long it was. Then all the females show up, and then we do it like another couple hours with all the females. And I had to give out some serious game. If you ain't watched that, that's a master at, at work. You did. So your boy hadn't eaten for like 13 hours. To say I was PO would be an understatement. Uh, that's my biggest gripe I've ever had with Fresh and Fit. Now, granted, uh, Myron did take me out to eat after that. Um, you know, I sat down, the four of us, we had something to eat. Uh, but that's my biggest gripe. And uh, I'm still not pleased with it. And get your goddamn shit together. Um, so that's that. But truth be told, uh, one of them females around there should have took care of that. And that's one thing we teach within the SAS, and which is the idea that as a woman, you need to make sure that a man eats every four hours. You should be asking him, are you hungry? Can I get you some food? Make sure that man eats every four hours. And that's why we teach culture, because sometimes they ain't got it from a father or from the culture that they're within. You dig? That's my biggest complaint with the gentleman. You dig? Um, I was hungry beyond that. There's no other unfortunate experience that I've had with them. And there's nothing I could complain about. As far as I can see, they seem to be good businessmen. Um, they speak their mind, honestly. Um, have they had some instances where, in which I was like, that doesn't sound like the truth. Oh, absolutely. Um, but all in all, I think that if we're being honest and being human, can we admit that all of us have said some things that are not entirely true? For sure. But there's levels to it. I get that. You know, <clears throat> if there's anything else, I'm, my presentation is complete. If there's anything else you want me to address about these gentlemen, go ahead and send in your question by a Cash App, Super Chat, or PayPal. Now, what you'll notice is that the world is bored. Consider this. If you ever look at Google trending, meaning it shows you what searches are people commonly looking at. The most common Google searches are sports related. Who won the soccer game? Who won the basketball football game? So that lets you know that humankind is bored. The reason you see fresh and fit on so many different platforms is because they're giving you guys exciting things to talk about because most YouTubers don't have an intellect. So they can't give you ideas because they don't have ideas. So they can only give you criticism which is a very low level thing. It has been stated that those who are high IQ talk about ideas. Those who are low IQ talk about people. It's called gossip. And that's why so many people are trying to make a name or gain a buck by talking about Fresh and Fit when really they should say thank you because Fresh and Fit gave them a payday. You did. He has an aria who said peace to the saints, tuition. My black side of the family actually thinks I dislike black women. My mom, female cousins, etc. I seem to attract black women mostly. However, these good looks bring them all. Speaking four languages don't hurt either. You did. Hey, man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong about letting them know what it is. And I actually know the gentleman. Uh, I had the good pleasure of speaking with him on a consultation. Man, the, the saint's hair is lovely. You know, no homo is super player, pimp, pimp, hooray. And uh, I'm sure a lot of females see his hair and wish their hair looked like his. I'm talking about some super old school playerism. You've you seen uh, the Bee Gees, them cats that uh, sing that song. Ah, ha, 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 stand alive, stand alive. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, we have seen Roland. He said pop and presentation. Cancel cancel culture is cancerous. Oh, true indeed. And the funny thing is people don't realize that they can't cancel fresh and fit because they actually need fresh and fit because without them, they'd have nothing to talk about. And fresh and fit are unique in that they're actually saying what is true to their heart. And the funny thing is that I've even seen people say, oh, yeah, you know, fresh is socially incompetent. Like he doesn't have like a social awareness. Well, are you saying that because he was honest? When you say social awareness, what you really mean is he should lie and sugarcoat what he's saying to make it palatable for average people. So people mostly don't respect honesty. And that's kind of the problem of our time. They say they want the truth, but they can't handle the truth. My brother, how can I broaden my vocabulary? Number one, what I would do when I read and I, especially my younger days, I used to read a tremendous amount and I didn't read anything. I read all of the books that were highly practical for either inspiring me or teaching me practical professional skills. And anytime I'd encounter a word that I did not know, I'd write it down and then I'd use it in context in a sentence that made sense for my life. Then I'd record it on audio and I'd listen to those audios. So for example, if the word was obsequious, which is to say like having like a being servile or having like a slavish, you know, response to someone, I would create a sentence, record it on audio, and I would listen to myself using that in context. So that's the key to building and retaining vocabulary. But at the end of the day, what I always tell the saints is that more than building vocabulary and being well-spoken, be good at delivering the goods. Activity gets the job done. And consider this. Let's look at Walter Weeks, for example. He stutters and is on a podcast. That's quite an amazing feat. And that's why I find it funny that people will insult fresh and fit, not realizing that for someone who stutters and has a speech impediment, to do a podcast and put themselves out to the public is actually a very brave, respectable thing because there are a lot of people who don't stutter, who are scared to go before the public and bear their soul in front of strangers. And so the fact that he's able to do that while stuttering and be successful at it, you might have to tip your hat to the young brother. You did. But instead, people would rather hate and crack jokes. And guess who's busy cracking jokes is the broke people who are jealous. You know, People who are successful, they understand what it takes to do work. And to deliver goods. And so we admire it because they're a peer, they're a colleague, but people below tend to just sneer and you know think that they're a jester. Okay, we have Ed Abundance. He said, Saint, have you tried intermittent fasting? No, he has not. Correct. I try to make sure that I eat every four hours. I stick to small meals so that even right after I eat, if I needed to throw hands, I could. I don't feel slowed down by my meal. Every now and then somebody might show up with some jerk chicken, you me, or they might show up with some carne asada french fries and I can't help myself. But generally I try to stick to the small meals. Do that. That's I know, right? I That's know. the way it goes. We have Vic's ball. He said, Bridget had no idea which song you were singing, plus 10 white points. I did let him know I did know that song. <laughs> the white points have been earned. I do get white points, though, for some things. We have Maurice Hurd said, Peace to the Saints. Just have to say this because too many people in the chat are getting this wrong. Miss B is not white. She's Ethiopian, more African than you. Ah, uh, so here's the thing. You know, I've had a lot of females on the in front of the camera and behind the camera. Often you guys are getting them confused. So that's that's Bridget. That's not Mrs. B. Mrs. B, actually, if you want to hear about Mrs. B, you're going to have to become a member at patreon.com slash the saint in the center because there's some crazy stories. But yes, you're correct. She's East African, Ethiopian, Habesha. She is indeed from the continent. Hey, this is Fully Cooley's second super shot. I think he's at $40 now. He's a quick question. What's your thought on the copyright strikes as Thank you. been throwing out at other YouTubers? I'm glad you asked me that because I meant to address it. It actually slipped my mind. So consider this. The first thing that people forget when they start to consider you a public figure is it's like they forget that you have feelings, right? I first want you to just consider this, gentlemen. Imagine you went on the internet one day and you saw that there were over 50 videos about you and they were all slandering you or even if they were telling the truth about you they were all insulting how would you feel if there were 50 videos 50 different people all insulting you and there were hundreds of thousands of views on the video so people are spreading a message about you that you have no control over a hurtful message i presume and even beyond it hurting your feelings it was a message that's hurting your brand and probably at some point impairing your ability to effectively do business. Well, I surmise you do anything you could to counter that effort and you should. 
So I think that their copyright strike effort was pretty low key and it was pretty clever. It didn't work and it backfired, not because it wasn't a good strategy. It backfired because ABBA and Preach are evil geniuses, especially ABBA, the, the East African cat. I don't know if he's Ethiopian or Somali, but he, he got to be like one or the other from Djibouti, something like that. Um, but that brother is sharp. Let me be clear. That brother has a very high IQ and he has particular gifts in the way of humor and comedy. I understand he's a stand-up comedian and he has A1 brains. There are very few people on the internet that I will give that compliment to, but that brother is sharp. He's very clever and he was extremely strategic in taking the, the internet itself and turning it against Fresh and Fit and even more profiting from that whole process. Because consider this, their channel had reached an asymptote. It essentially stopped growing and started to plateau. Even though it was a big channel, it just wasn't getting as much reach. So they went on the Fresh and Fit podcast to see if they could scoop up some more views and expand their audience, which they were able to do. And then after that, they turned around and kind of did a roasting video on Fresh and Fit. And I, I actually have another video specifically about this topic. But consider this. I know how Fresh and Fit treated them because I know how they treated me as a celebrity guest when I went to their town. They pick you up from the airport. The second time, these motherfuckers didn't take me to eat. So, you know, hey, y'all owe me some jerk chicken. But they pick you up from the airport. They take you to eat. They show you love. They take you out on the town in the evening, you know, take you to the club, show you a good time, whatever you like. That being said, it's like they took you to their home, right? Like just imagine somebody coming into your home and they get your mother's cooking. You dig your mama cook up some chili beans for them or whatever she make. She cook up some, some whatever your ethnic food is, some mafungo, what have you. Uh, and then the person leaves your house. You think everything's all good. And then they make a video disrespecting you. Like I'd be pretty pissed uh, if I'm being honest with you. Now, in their case, the copyright strike was an effort to remove all of the people who were A, profiting by their name and B, dragging their name through the dirt and hurting their brand. So if you look at some of your idols like Robert Greene, who, by the way, is just a, a bum author who's trying to plagiarize from the great Niccolo Machiavelli, who made a masterwork entitled The Prince. And I did a seven part series on that masterwork, which you can find at patreon.com slash the saint in the center. But even a guy like Robert Greene would say, copyright strikes, bro, that's devious. Like that's low key. It's a super strong tactical piece of warfare. Now, the only thing is that it, it essentially backfired. But here's the thing in life and in business, you try many things, some work, some don't. But I think it was really smart and strategic on their part. Were they playing nice? No, but consider this. Do you play nice with your enemies? People who are trying to hurt your brand, hurt your reputation, do you play nice with them? i tell you this. Me, if somebody's trying to do me greasy, fuck they mama, fuck they daddy, kill they pets, I want everything dead. I don't give a fuck. You hear me? If somebody's, hey, if you're a good person, I'm going to be good to good people. But if you want some smoke, I want everything dead. You hear me? In a real way. So I can't hate anybody who uses whatever tool at their disposal to get their enemies up out of there because you ain't supposed to play nice with your enemies. So it's a very strategic, psychological marketing campaign that they're using when they're saying, they copyright striked us. Well, yeah, you talking shit about them. Would you expect them to pat you on the back? I mean, let's be real here. Yeah, we did have someone that asked about how many calories a day. Again, he doesn't know anything about how many calories the food is all made for him or brought to him. So, but you can find his diet on Patreon.com. We have King Supreme nine twenty one sent a hundred dollars. I'll let you say it. He writes, "Bro, that's the same way they should have thought about talking about black women." <gasps> Yeah, indeed. They should have thought about that. Shout out to the real black women, the ones who wear their hair, their hair natural. You hear me? And I love my women thick. I like the booty to shake when you walk. He writes, they have feelings too. Oh, indeed they do. He writes, no need to say what you don't like. Just shout out to what you do like. Oh, indeed. Right. And as I often tell people in life, let's keep our eyes on the prize, right? We don't have to talk about them other guys or the things we don't want. Let's keep our eyes on the prize. I think you bring up a very good point, Saint. He writes, they have sisters on the show, but talk ish about dating them, right? And it's so foul because they say it to these black women's face and they just sit there and take it. Like Puffy said, take that, take that. He writes, still, peace to the saints. Oh, agreed, saint. I appreciate you sharing that meaningful perspective. That's a good dialogue you bring forward. 
Okay, we have all of my hit that piece of the Saints. I'm currently reading Black Box. So much game. Thank you for sharing that. Saying the amazing thing about the Black Box, it's all real stories. These boys out here live in a cartoon, fictional, anime existence. You know, half these YouTubers used to work at the goddamn perfume counter at Macy's. We have Ephesians. He said more tuition. He said great show, MVB, and all the saints need a Bridget in our life. You probably do. You probably do. But the question is, do you know how to manage your program to get the best out of her? <laughs> That's funny, huh? I will be managing my program. Right. But I'm talking about metaphorically, They're, whatever Bridget is that they encounter. <clears throat> if you want to figure that out, I recommend you check out the Conference 2 footage. Because in that conference two footage, I give a, a significant lecture on what is it to be a man and what should your trajectory be as a male? You know, what milestone should you be looking to achieve in life and how you, should you be developing yourself psychologically? And then I talk about well, what is a female? How does she grow from a girl into a woman? What should her mindset be and what should her priorities be? And then thirdly, I tell you, OK, now we know what a man is. We know what a woman is. How do you interact effectively together and how does the man Lead that woman. You got to be worthy of leadership. Mitch McCauley just said conference two footage is something that I highly recommend. And indeed, and it's, it's real player because one, it's very inexpensive. And two, you get the business education. The conference two footage, is, there's a lecture there that talks about how you can start a business for less than $500 in real life. And then also it gives you that education on the male female relations. And by the way, Mitchell McCauley is one of the saints who's going to have his products available at www. T H E S A S N dot com. And even just today, <clears throat> we had guys making money on my website, some of the Saints. So uh, Andrew made more money today on yeah. his jewelry. Uh, and we're going to send that money straight to him. So we always show love out here. Okay. Okay. We have Call Me Sir. This is his second super chat. He said, You saved me from paying escorts mm -hmm. and a porn addiction. Thank you so much. I'm always rock with you regardless. You a real G. I appreciate that. And I just always hope that people show me the loyalty that I've shown them over a lifetime. You know, we can always say things out of our mouth, but to engage in action is a higher level. And let me tell you guys something about what the saint said. You know, paying for escorts, obviously it can be expensive, but when you lay down with those women, they don't care anything about you. And what's worse, because they don't care anything about you, they might be menstruating, they might have STDs. And I assure you, they're not going to tell you because they're just trying to pull the dollar out of you. And so you got to love yourself. And that's why in the three sins Bible, we say, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people, be good to yourself. Even before you're good to good people, be good to yourself, take care of yourself because no one else will for the most part. And then lastly, he writes, get away from that porn addiction. I actually have a video that talks about masturbation and porn addiction because those are things that, that don't help you. They eat you. You dig? So I'm so happy to hear him uh, being man enough to even admit that. And the salmon recipe that I'm actually about to have for dinner is actually available on patreon.com slash the saint in the center in that document that goes through my entire uh, my entire diet. 